let's say that this is, is a transparent object, like so, then you're going to get a tinted shadow. You're going to get a shadow that's like that. See? You're going to get a tinted shadow. Um, and also you may get a secondary specular highlight inside. And that specular highlight will be colored, it'll be tinted because the light has to come back through this 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 tinted globe. So, you know, that that's something else to be aware of. And finally, um, I'm running out of room here. If I use a tinted or not even a tinted globe, yeah, let's. I'm just going to use a tinted globe for now. It doesn't necessarily have to be tinted, but I'm just using it so we can see the outline of it. I'll put that specular back in there and put the uh, the secondary specular highlight in there. Um, yeah, not only are you going to get a tinted shadow, but if this thing has an index, if this thing has an index of refraction that is higher than well, higher than one. You know, if it's if it's if the if the optical density of this medium is higher than air or whatever it is you're looking at, you're going to get refraction. You're going to get some bending of light. So, what that's going to do is that's going to cause your shadow. I'm just going to draw it like so. Your shadow is going to be focused like a magnifying glass. It's going to and actually it might be quite intense because all that light is now being focused on one spot. There we go. So that is sort of what you will get. Actually, I, that's that's not all. The, um, the reflection inside, I'm going to have to redraw this. So this time I'm going to need some black. Uh, so let's see, what would that look like? you're going to get something uh, like this, similar. You're going to see this shadow, you know, re-refracted inside the globe. So, it gets pretty tricky when you start doing, um, you know, manual reflections. Uh, you're, you're going to get stuff like that. Um, even if you had, even if it wasn't tinted, so let me uh, just set up another example. So supposing I had something that was not tinted, then the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw the shadow first, and then I'm going to focus the light. There. So that's what the shadow is going to look like. You're going to get um, refraction caustics. Um, caustics is whenever you have light that is focusing. So in this case, you know, if it's a if it's a glass sphere, you know, a, a non-colored glass sphere, you, well, you might see the highlight like that, and then it's gonna, you know, we're gonna see a secondary distortion of this um, of this shadow, and it's really hard to imagine what that's gonna look like. Uh, so all you're gonna see is you're gonna see the pattern down below. Let's see what is gonna happen to it. Shoot, I really don't know. Only way to do that is to actually observe and, and, and look at the effect of what's going to happen. So that's actually outside of a realm of my experience. And it is something that you're going to have to try on your own. Yeah, it's something you're just going to have to try on your own to find out what the right answer is. Um, you're going to have to take a you know a glass ball or something like that and see what happens to it. Uh, that is one of the joys of painting and doing these exercises is being able to find out you know what makes it work, how what what what's what looks right, what looks wrong. So you know hey uh, maybe it's a little bit of food of food for thought. So you know same thing you you can you can also try taking these same spheres. And 
practice lighting these from different directions. I mean, just because you can watch me do it doesn't mean that you know how to do it. There's only so much you can learn just by watching someone else do it. You have to try it. Um, oops. Yeah, that's... They're lit from another direction. What happens if, I, if these were lit from behind? Well, in that case, and I'm going to start, since it's lit from behind, I'm going to start with the bright light, then choose the shadow color, and light it like that. There. So, you know, if I was to light it from behind, that's, that's sort of what you'll get. Um, let me think for a second. You might get something that's really, really bright. Maybe I just want to throw in a bit of a rim highlight. So, yeah, practice these op optical phenomena, you know, start thinking about the light, start thinking about, you know, where the actual surfaces are sitting. And, you know, try, 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 try these out, try these out. Um, if I had, oh, here's another example. Let's say I had, you know, what would a white sphere look like? There, so I've got that white white ball. Now I have this thing here. I have to manually reflect it. So I, what's going to happen is... Yeah, maybe something like that. Um, you know, handle, handle, ref, learn to handle reflections. Learn to, to handle what these, these things are going to look like. Um, and you know, before you do any 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 coloring on, on you know giant murals or that kind of thing, work this stuff out because it's going to be you're going to find it all over. You're gonna you're gonna have to deal with it. Um, let me think of other of other examples. Oh, if you had something that was metallic, something that was metallic, like uh, well, things that are completely metallic. So let's, let me just start over. Something that is completely, you know, metallic and reflective has no color at all. It simply reflects what's going on around it. So, uh, yeah. So, so a, a completely metallic shader or a material might look just trying to think. Yeah, something like that that. I mean, don't take my word for it. Like, don't, like, don't just copy these patterns. Um, you know, you have to be thinking what hap what is actually happening to the light as this surface bends it. So there, there's some metallic reflections, or you know, mirror mirror reflections. It's uh, it's it's. This is what the computers. Um, this is this is what computers do. Computers have to. They use mathematical formulas to reflect these sort of things. So, this is one of the things that a computer can do better than a person can. Um, but you know, hey, it doesn't hurt to be able to manually do this because, you know, the, <laughs> this way you don't even have to have a computer to uh, to to do this sort of thing. Uh, let me put the light source, figure out where the light source is, might be up there. So, yeah, more materials. Um, and then the more an object is, uh, is, is rough, if you have a rough surface, then it's going to wind up frosting, you know, you're going to get a bit of a frosting effect. Something like that. So, yeah, if you start sandblasting the surface of this, yeah, that's what you'll get. Anyway, think about it, guys. Practice.